Welcome to third grade chat, Apple. We are ha happy that you are here. Please bow your heads and pray with me. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us here today. Please bless us third graders and help us praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please, please stand and join, join us for two songs. a little hard, blinded but I'm trying not to lose sight, I don't got this, I know you got this, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I believe it before I see it, yeah, I know you're gonna see me through it, if anybody can, you can do it, God I know in the trouble. Falls, who am I gonna call? The one who put it up there in the first place. Full scale attack, devil on my back, better lace him up and go put on my game face. I don't got this, I know you got this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I believe it before I see it. Yeah, I know you're gonna see me through it. If anybody can, you can do it. You gotta know in the trouble.
for words for being with us. Now we are going to hear from our speaker, Mr. Schoberg. Mr. Schoberg is Mr. Jonas's dad, and he is a missionary. His job is to tell others about Jesus and the gift of salvation that Jesus has for all of us. Let's see what God wants us to learn from his word this morning. Okay. Oh, hey, that mic works. Well, thank you for letting me come this morning. Like, uh, like Tori said, I'm Mrs. Rajanis' father, and my name is Mr. Schoberg, and I'm here with Mrs. Rajanis' brother and sister and my wife, and I'm gonna ask them, I'm gonna ask them to stand up. They're in the back. So there's my wife. There are two of my kids. Mrs. Rajanis has another sister who's not with us. She's a student at the University of Illinois in veterinary medicine. So she's Mrs. Rajanis' older sister. What I'd like to talk to you today about a little bit is, is what we do. Not just what we do, but what we do. And who we are, but not just who we are, but who we are. So first I'm going to talk about who, and I'll, I just introduced you to our family, and then I want to talk a little bit about what. So uh, you, I see the, your, your emphasis this, this, the, these week is to grow in Christ, in, in spiritual maturity. And that's what, it's, well, that's what God wants for all of us. But what God called us to do specifically is what we would call global missions. So what I, Mrs. Rajanis is going to help me, and I know her third grade class is going to help me, but what I'd like to do is I have some flags up here, and I want you to help me if you can tell me what country it represents. So first of all, I need one volunteer. Well, Mrs. Rajanis is going to choose. Okay, I need, yeah, two to start off with. This is good. All right. So... The first one is maybe a little easier than the others, okay? Unravel that. Okay, this is, um, we're, it's Friday, you know, end of the week, so we might be a little tired, but we're going to, uh, who can tell me, this is a hard one, all right, it's really hard, but who can tell me what country, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call on somebody, okay? Who can tell me what country this, this flag represents? Yes. America. America, United States, very good. All right, we're more familiar with that one. Okay. Okay, it gets a little bit harder, okay? All right. All right. Okay, can people see this flag? Isn't it a, it's a beautiful flag, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Can you see it? All right. All right, who, I'm gonna choose from a, see, I don't know where classes are all sitting, but I'm gonna go back a few rows. I'm gonna see who can tell me what country is, is this flag? Let's see, um, you, you have a yellow, I see something yellow, yep, you. Can you tell me which? Philippines? No? Okay, somebody has a really cool mask. That's you, yeah. Nigeria, no, but a good, good guess. Okay, uh, let's see here, I'm gonna go way in the back. You, no, yeah, you turned around, but it's not that far back. You, uh, let's see, you're near the aisle. So you have a, a white blouse on, you have a mask on. Yeah, that's, no, look back at me. No, she turned around. She, you. Oh, see if I say, if I say a maroon, that, that doesn't give it. That's you, yeah, yeah, you. What country? No? Okay, let me see. Let me take one more. One more. Okay, right here in the front row. You, can you tell me what country? 
No. Okay. I'm going to give you a hint. Here's a hint. Listen carefully. This is my hint. It's a Spanish-speaking country. Oh, uh, here's... For those who are Span... Are there Spanish speakers here? Okay. It's the word... Listen. Shh. It's the word in Spanish for that line that goes around the globe. Do you know that line that goes around the globe? Okay. Yes. What country? No. But it is Spanish speaking. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you. Here it is. This is the flag of Ecuador. Oh, you know how many roll them up? We can roll them up. And... Thank you very much. How many people knew that? Did somebody know that? And I just didn't call on you. I'm sorry. So here we go. I know it, it's very exciting. I, I got you. It's my fault. It's Friday. We got riled up here. So Ecuador is a country where we lived for 15 years. The reason I showed you the American flag is because we're, in our family, we're all Americans. However, Mrs. Rajanis and her older sister are also Ecuadorians because they were born in a little hospital in the jungle region of Ecuador. So do you see that girl in the blue dress there? That's Mrs. Rajanis when she was a little girl. And that's her older sister, who's a student at University of Illinois. Okay, Mr. Wilson, can you go to the next slide? Okay. That's me when I was younger. A lot younger. And those are two friends of mine. They, they're two friends of mine that are from Ecuador. But here's the thing, they speak Spanish. And then they speak another language. They call it a dialect, or they speak their tribal language. So I'll show you something here. I have, I have a Spanish Bible, OK? And we can say La Biblia. Yeah. And then I have, this is a Bible that was translated into the dialect of those two guys up here. This one's harder. You don't have to repeat it, but it's called Yusa Chichamwe. It was, and it was not an easy language to learn. But what we did is we went to Ecuador and we worked to be able to teach the Bible to people. So I grew up, like you folks, in the United States, I never learned another language until it was time to go. I know I took Spanish in high school, but to be honest, I just took it to pass tests. But then I had to learn it to be able to speak it. So my wife and I know Spanish, and then we learn this dialect. That's what we do. We work with people. Okay, you can go to the next slide, Mr. Wilson. And, uh, yeah. That animal, that animal is called a taper. Yeah. And you can see Mrs. Rajanis is not afraid of the taper. It was, that was that kind of a, a little zoo that we lived near. And so in the jungle, there's lots of different animals. You, did you see Mrs. Rajanis was kind of holding a snake in one picture? Yeah, we had a lot of snakes. We had big animals, little animals in the jungle. But what we did is we worked to tell people about Jesus. And we learned their culture and we learned their language. Because we said, even though America is where we were born, our most important who, of who we are is that we follow Jesus. And so we want other people to know Jesus. And so we adapted to their language and their culture. I'm going to show you just a couple things from their culture, and I'll explain them. So, Mrs. Rajanis, if you have, you can have a few people, whoever you choose. I need, I need three, four people come up.
So, do your, does your does any of you at home? Do you ever have leftovers after you're done eating? Yeah, you do. What do you What do you do with the leftovers if you're going to keep them? You put them in the refrigerator and you put them in something that's plastic. See this? This is this is like jungle Tupperware. This is this this ba this box. They didn't have refrigeration, but this this basket is woven like two baskets, and then in between there's a leaf so that bugs don't get into it. There's lots of bugs. Can you hold on to that for me? Thank you. They would have big. They have big parties where they would wear decorative things. Oh, I forgot one thing here. Let me go and grab it. And they would get dressed up and they would make their own costumes. They didn't they didn't have a place to go to and buy. So they would make these beads. You know, these beads, they put this these are 25 years old and they still have exactly the same color. This is a, a jungle type of, it does not something you'd eat, but a jungle nut. I'm going to put this over your shoulder here, okay? And I'm going to let you wear that one too. Can you put that on like a necklace? Actually, you know what they do? They would slip their hand through it, put your hand through it here, and they wear it across like that. Yep, just like that. Now, you know, the costume isn't complete unless you have some headgear. So I'm going to put, here's a crown. This is, this is your new king, okay? And, and, and here's your prince, you know? And do you all have a backpack? Okay, this was like their backpack. Now, you know what's pretty cool? All these things they made, Everything they made, they found the material right there where they lived. They didn't go to the store and buy it. They would dry different plants to be able to make the things they'd weave with. They would hunt. You could see this is, excuse me, Prince. This is a, this is a, this is a toucan. You know what a toucan is, type of word? They had, they had hunted these birds, and then they would use the feathers, and inside they'd have a woven crown that they'd, they'd wrap it in. All right. And this one, too, they would, sometimes they'd buy some of this yarn, but a lot of it they'd, they'd color and roll themselves. You know, sometimes we think, we think that people in, in, in those places we see in pictures like in National Geographic, they think, oh, they're so primitive. But actually, they're very smart people. They're very smart. They can make things out of what they find in, in, around them. And it was our privilege to go and step into their world, to learn their language, to understand their culture, to understand the way they think, to realize, OK, God made these people, and they're from a totally different people group than us. But we get the privilege to come here and live with them and learn their language. Thank you so much. Let's give these people a hand. Thank you, third graders. Thank you so much. All right. Great job. So those were wonderful years. We lived in Ecuador. And then all of a sudden, our organization said, you know what? There are enough believers in Ecuador that they can actually do the work without you as a foreigner being there. Because what we want you to do is go to place a place where there's a, more of a spiritual need. Now, it doesn't mean they don't have, they, they look like they're okay, like physically they have really nice things, but they really, not many people really know Jesus. So they asked us to go to a different country. Okay, I need another volunteer here. And I'm going to see. Okay, we're only get, we're going to take two guesses on this country. Okay, we moved to a completely. I, I'll give you a hint. This is not a country in South America, and and they don't they don't speak Spanish. Okay, let's see here. Let's. Okay, you that's jumping up and down. Yeah, with the red mask. 
Yeah. What, which country is it? You're right, I heard France. That's correct. Very good. <laughs> So, when Mrs. Rajanis was in third grade, in third grade, I think that was, were you in third grade when we came back? All right. Um, we came back to the United States, and we had to go to churches and tell them about the need in France, and they prayed for us and gave some of their offerings so we could go. Mr. Wilson, you can go to the next slide. And we went to France. And you can see my son Keenan there holding a medal because we ran in a race. But what we did is there, we had to learn another language. You know, my kids, kids like you, you learn languages so quick. It was really hard for us. I was 40 years old already when we went there. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, with the kids, my kids, Mrs. Rajanis and her siblings, they helped me learn French. You can go to the next slide. What we did is we got to know people. You know, we, we stepped into the things that they do. We, we found a way to get to know them. And what we wanted to do is for them to know us. Because what we wanted to do is to communicate who Jesus is to them. You can go to the next slide, Mr. Wilson. So there you go. Yeah, you know, I, does anyone here play soccer? Oh, yeah. I, I didn't grow up playing soccer, but... My son Keenan played soccer, and that was a way we got to know people too. We got into the community. You can go to the next slide, Mr. Wilson. So here, it's, here this is the first church we had, and we didn't have a building like this. We would meet in, we, for a while we met on a boat that was on the Seine River, and sometimes like this meeting was in our apartment because that day we couldn't use the boat. Um, so we, we found places around town that we could meet. You can go to the next slide. But our goal, this was in, a, in an art gallery we met. Our goal was to introduce them to the Jesus of the Bible. See, they had had religion, but they really didn't know Jesus of the Bible. So we thought, how can we, how can we help them understand who Jesus is? All right, I think... Go to the next slide. And I had to put this one in there just so, you know, it was just, it was such a beautiful place. We lived, we lived about like a, like a half hour, well, like a four, half hour jog to the Eiffel Tower. So here, isn't it interesting where we lived? We lived in the jungle, and then God had put us in Paris. But you know, the, really the most important question and what I want to answer this morning and the rest of the time we have is why? Why did we go? We really didn't go because we didn't say, let's go, let's sign up for a job where we go to the most interesting places. That wasn't the reason. Because the why is a, is a reason we have for just what we do right now. It just so happened that God had us go different places. Mr. Wilson, go to the next slide. And this is the verse I want to introduce today. Maybe you've read it before, but I'm going to read it for you right now. It said, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. And so here's the thing. Why did we go? We went to make disciples. Now, disciples. What does disciples mean? There was a time when I was in college, I worked in a neighborhood. I went to Moody Bible Institute, and I worked in a neighborhood that the disciples was a gang that ran the, ran the area where I was. Do you think that's the disciples he's talking about? No. Does anyone know what disciple means? Do you know what disciple means? What does it mean? Okay, they believe in God. What else? Yeah. Yeah. They follow. 
That's right. It's somebody who follows Jesus. In fact, you know what? A good word for a disciple is like an apprentice. It's somebody who learns from another. So what it's saying about us, those of us who put our trust in Jesus, is that we're people who follow Jesus and we learn from him. But then what does it say? It says, go, in, go into all the world and make disciples. So what is it saying? Is it saying, well, that means that the pastor of your church, he's the guy, and the rest of us watch him as he makes disciples. Is that what this means? You know, this, this is actually saying that all of us are called, those of us who know Jesus, and we're learning of Jesus, and we put our trust in Jesus, we're supposed to also be the people who learn about Jesus through us so that they know Jesus and they follow Jesus. And then those people who come to know Jesus are also supposed to make disciples. Do you know that in this, in this verse right here, there's really only, in the original language, there's really only one word that's a command word, and it is to make disciples. The word that says, therefore, go, it's basically saying, as you go, make disciples. So as you live in Harvey, as you live in South Holland, as you go this way and that way, make disciples. That's what it's saying to do. And then it says there's two things that in this, these verses that have to do with making disciples. One is it says baptizing them. And what it's saying in that is that when you make disciples, I don't want you just to say, hey, can you raise your hand if you love Jesus? No, it means like, I'm really committed. So it's all about Jesus. When a person gets baptized, it's like saying to the whole world, this is what happened inside of me. This is what Jesus did. And I'm telling everybody that I identify with Jesus. That's who I am now. It doesn't mean that I'm, I forget about who I am in my family or my cultural background, but my main thing is that I belong to Jesus. And then it says, the other word is a teaching. We're teaching people about Jesus. So the things you learn in Bible class, they're good for you, and then you're going to be able to turn around and explain things to other people. But here's another thing that's really interesting. Do you know that most people learn more by what I do than what I say. They imitate me. Isn't that true? You really learn because you watch a person and you do as they do. So it's not just what I say, it's what I do. You know, right now, you, your parents are probably aware of it, and maybe you are too. Over in Eastern Europe, there's a lot of conflict in the country of Ukraine, right? The leader of Russia decided to invade the Ukraine. And our, we, have, we have spiritual family in both those countries. We have brothers and sisters in Jesus that live in those countries. I've listened to the radio these days, and I listened to one interview with a pastor from the Ukraine. And they, the person who was asking questions kind of wanted to ask more political questions. And they said, you know what, it's not that we don't have an opinion. Of course, we want freedom. We don't want this war. So we get together and we cry about it. But then we go out and we announce the gospel. Basically what he's saying is our first identity, even more than being Ukrainian, is that we belong to Jesus. Do you know that there's a verse in Psalm 119. I'm just going to read it really quickly. And I've got to put on my glasses because I'm not young anymore. Here's two verses, Psalm 119, verses 1 and 2. It says, Blessed are they whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who keep his statutes and seek him with all their heart. Have you ever seen, and maybe you are one, you use the word blessed. We are blessed. I hear people say that a lot. I'm a blessed person. And that's, I've seen t-shirts with blessed on it. And it's true, we're blessed. That means that we've received a lot. I think that's what most people mean when they say, it. you know, I have a family, I have a, I have a roof over my head, I have food on the table, I have clothes, I'm blessed. But in this verse and in the Bible, when it says blessed, what it really means in the original language 
In Greek, it means that I'm fully satisfied because of who God is and his favor. And it doesn't matter what happens to me. I think a lot of times when I say blessed, I mean my circumstances are blessed. I feel good, you know. But in the Bible, what blessed means is that you have favor from God. You're in a good relationship with God. And so no matter what the circumstances are, you can be fully satisfied. When you go out to make disciples and people watch you, do they see you fully satisfied in Jesus? I know that for me, I'm tempted to complain when things are hard. <laughs> so what do they remember? Oh, you know, Jim, when, when things get tough, he's just kind of a whiner, you know? Is that what, I, is that what they want, I want them to remember? What I want you to remember is this. If you know Jesus, if you know Jesus, you could be fully satisfied in that relationship. And it doesn't mean you're gonna, not going to be more happy with some things that happen and less happy with others. But it means that your number one place of joy is in knowing Jesus. And people are watching you. People watch you when you go through hard things. People watch us. And they say, what makes this person different? What makes those Ukrainian believers different, even though they have war on their soil? They're not flipping out. They're not going crazy. It's because they know who they are. They're disciples of Jesus. Now, all of us are called to make disciples right here. Okay, I've got a few more flags, three more flags left. Okay? All right, I'm, I'm going to, I'm sorry, I have to give preference to the third graders because, you know, that's, that's my class, all right? I'm a third grader, right? So I need three volunteers. I'm going to do three more flags. These are hard, okay? I'm going to just tell you, they're not, they're not easy. All right, come on over here. You can come right to the front. Here's one. We'll just open them up. Okay, here's another. Go ahead and open it up. I'll help you open this one. All right. Okay, one guess. Just one guess with this one right here, the first one. Anybody? Yes. Do you know? Yeah. No? I'll tell you who it is. It's, it's Egypt. All right. How about this second one here? This is kind of a hard one, too. Let's see. Yeah, you who's way up there with the blue mask. You. No, that's you. No, right in front of you, with, with, the, with the beads. You, do you know which, yeah. No, that one's Thailand. That's in Asia. All right, now this one, this is probably one of my favorite flags. It's so beautiful. All right, let's see here. Uh, okay, you standing up, black mask, yes. Nigeria? You're right, you're in the right continent, but it's actually South Africa. Okay, you know, Nelson Mandela, that's his country. Here's my point, and this is the reason why I mention these flags. These are places I haven't gone to, but it's possible, it's possible that there's somebody here as a student that besides making disciples right where you live, God's going to call you to be the messenger, to go to another country. Because when that verse says nations, it's not just talking about countries, it means a people group. And there are people groups, all kinds of people groups in the world, that don't have anyone telling them about Jesus. They need somebody to go and share who Jesus is. So I want you to think about that. We have so much here, we receive, and not everyone's called to go and leave our country. But there may be some here today that are. Yeah. And it's really cool. It's a great life. No matter where you are, to live for Jesus and to make disciples, it's the best. It's the best. I'm going to pray, and I'll collect these flags, and then I'm going to turn it over to your school. Thank you so much. You, you gave me great attention. Thanks for participating, too. All right, let's pray. Thank you very much. That's encouraging. Let's pray. 
Father, I want to thank you today that we know you. I want to thank you because somebody told me about you, and I came to know you. And then somebody showed me what it meant to follow you, both teaching me from your Bible and also showing me by their life. And I want to thank you that I have the opportunity to do that with others and that all of us who know you are called to make disciples. But we know it's really you working through us to see that happen. And I want to pray for countries and people groups in different countries who don't have anyone to tell them about you or show them who you are. I pray that you would give us a heart for others so that we would want to tell others, we want to show them who you are. And I want to pray specifically for the conflict in Eastern Europe. Father, we were far from it, and yet it does affect us because we have a world where there's a lot of communication, but more importantly, because we love those people. And it's very easy to see some people as enemies politically and all that, but we know everybody needs to know you. So I'm going to ask you, Father, I'm going to ask you that Mr. Putin comes to know you. I pray that you would change this war, that this would not go on. I pray that whether it's by force or by change of heart, this war would end. And I want to pray for those of us, those of those who are in our family and your family there, that you would help them to live for you and that you protect them. Thank you for living in a free country where we're free to talk about you. Help us take advantage of that today and this weekend. In Jesus' name, amen.